Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. An on-chain analytics firm states that uh, the odds of XRP price pumping in the short term are, uh, are higher than usual. I'll explain to you why they're saying that. And by the way, this comes against a backdrop of just a ton of positive articles about XRP. Sometimes we get these bursts and it's just interesting and notable. And I don't literally want to go through and, uh, and read all of them, but I just want to point this out. Like, here's one from you today titled, Here's How XRP's Value Can Finally Be Realized. Max Avery. And so that individual, he's talking about actually the, the real world utility of XRP. So it's good that some people actually get this. Um, then here's another one from you today. Ripple will win as well as crypto industry. Uh, David Gockstein predicts. And then there's this one. This is one that I uh, was talking about just a second ago. XRP pump chances now higher than usual, sentiment says. But there's a catch. And this is just from one crypto media outlet. I'm seeing stuff like this on platform after platform, all, like all sorts of various crypto media outlets. And I, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's just a lot of optimism around what's going on in the, in the, the world of XRP. And perhaps part of that is because if you look at the, the, um, the uh, Ripple's reply brief, it was the final legal brief in the entire SECV Ripple case for, from Ripple anyway, like, like every, every time there's been a brief, especially over the last few months, it, people read it, they analyze it, they take it, and they're just like, yeah, this looks bad for the SEC. It looks really good for XRP holders, effectively, as a result. And though even though it's technically Ripple still, XRP holders are effectively under attack as a result of, of what the SEC is asserting and effectively arguing that, you know, XRP is a security just by the nature of it existing, a security per se. And there are also expectations that uh, the, the market, it's either already bottomed are we're pretty much right there and in a general sense i would agree with a lot of those sentiments except for if the contagion the ftx collapse the contagion from that spreads further and i still just have in the mindset like i don't know how that doesn't happen further to some degree we've only seen a couple collapses at this point so it was ftx and then what happened after that there's the concern about genesis which would have really broad implications uh, for the entire crypto industry, but but really beyond that, the only other actual collapse off the top of my head, unless I'm actually forgetting something obvious, would be BlockFi. You know, that's it. So what? It's just FTX and BlockFi are gone, and now the what, just everything's back to normal. I, what about the other you know eight billion dollars on the balance sheet? Didn't didn't that uh, negatively impact a bunch of other firms? I mean, I think the answer is yes. But anyway, before going further, I do want to be clear: I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So you got XRP at 38 cents and Bitcoin's hovering a little above $17,000. Uh, not, not bad seeing that since Bitcoin got down to as low as what a month ago after FTX collapse? Roughly a month ago. Uh, didn't it get down to like 15500 ish at its worst? It was somewhere around there, I think. So the fact that it's jumped back up to over 17,000 kind of hanging out there doesn't sound too bad. And even if you look at the crypto fear and greed index, people, yeah, they're an extreme fear, but only 25 out of 100. I mean, if you go back half a year ago, it got down to, I can't remember exactly when, but it got down to like literally six out of 100. So the fact that it's at 25 out of 100, it's fine, it's bad, but I'm just saying, unless we see that contagion spread, I mean, all things considered, not that bad. So uh, as far as this, uh, these expectations about the price of XRP pumping, that brings us to this article titled again, uh, XRP pump chances now higher than usual, sentiment says. Reads as follows. Popular data aggregator sentiment has tweeted that the current top list of cryptocurrencies that are trending in social dominance includes XRP, XLM, and SNT. And so I'll just pause to speculate a little bit here about why that might be. I mean, yeah, so XRP fine, one of the... Uh, most well-known cryptocurrencies out there in the entire damn planet, sure. But uh, might that, again, have something to do with some of the positive uh, news having to do with the SEC v. Ripple case? Because I will tell you, in reading Ripple's reply to the SEC's motion for summary judgment of a few days back, I, all it did was instill further confidence, in, for me at least, and highlight the degree to which the SEC is completely insane. Anyway, peace continues. This may indicate soon a price surge. However, there is a catch, sentiment analysts warn. Sentiment tweeted that once a coin's social dominance goes high, chances of its price rise become higher than usual. However, uh, while these coins are trending, sentiment warns there is also a risk of a quick sell-off by those traders who are after a quick profit. And so, look, for me, I, I, 
all the short, short term noise, I just like, eh, okay, I'm, I'm staying aware of what's going on because I'm interested in crypto, but none of this is going to matter. I mean, if you just look at long term uh, viability for the entire crypto asset class and specifically XRP, how it's being adopted, it's like, okay, whatever, not going to matter. And, and by the way, I did want to highlight this uh, chart analyst Credible Crypto seems to think that we're not going to have to wait that much longer to see new Bitcoin all time highs. It'll be interesting to see if he ends up being correct on this. Uh, this is one of the more bullish things I've seen from him. And he tweeted out, uh, well, well, actually, there's a, a cryptocurrency exchange, BitTrue, tweeted out, do you think it's going to be a bull or bear market in 2023? Incredible Crypto retweeted that and wrote, bull. None of that echo bubble stuff either. New all-time highs. Bitcoin. So he thinks we are going to see a new all-time high for Bitcoin before 2023 is out. And I hope he's right. That would be fantastic. That would be a good time. And Bitcoin leads the market. So whenever that happens, you know that you know, the, the market moves in tandem and XRP is going to have its day in the sun. I don't pretend to know when it's going to be. Uh, he does note in a separate tweet that he thinks that this new all-time high would probably be middle to probably later in the year. But hey, I, I will take that. There's all sorts of people that are calling for doomsday style scenarios. And, you know, it's going to take five years to recover what just happened with FTX. I've never bought into that. I, I really don't buy it. And th the only way that's going to take five years to recover is if something disastrous happens having nothing to do with crypto. And then like the stock market plummets and everything, and it just is looking completely disastrous. Now, I'm not expecting that here, but I'm just saying it wouldn't be a, a uniquely crypto thing, I, I don't suppose. You know? um, then there is this from the Daily Huddle. Bloomberg analyst says crypto in final stages of bear market. And again, I, I'll agree with that. That seems what to be what's most probable unless the contagion spreads. And I, I, again, like I keep saying, I don't know how it doesn't spread because it's, it's too gigantic. And, and it, it doesn't just because it doesn't hasn't happened yet. It doesn't mean that it won't. Don't forget that after Luna collapse, it took months for multiple additional uh, disasters to occur with Celsius and then uh, Voyager, so on and so forth. Piece reads as follows. Bloomberg commodity strategist Mike McGlone says that Ethereum will come out ahead due to the smart contract platform's solid fundamentals. In a new interview on Stansberry Research, the analyst says it may take time for a reversal, but the worst of the crypto winter is likely behind us. And he said the following, this is a quote, cryptos have already backed up 80% and you just don't want to get too bearish when a thing is down 80%. I think we're in the final stages of this bear market for cryptos, but it's not going to be easy. Typically, markets don't just make a V bottom. They have to make it as difficult as possible. And the key thing I've learned trading in markets, especially bear markets, is they'll make you lose your hair, they'll take money from everybody, and they have to be volatile and difficult. That's the key thing. Remember, this is not a crypto winter. This is an everything winter, except for one asset class. Those are commodities. Commodities have to go down, and if they don't, the Fed is going to keep tightening until they do. And so that that's, to me, the way I look at it, end quote. Now, that seems very rational to me. I mean, after capitulatory events, that's the time for people who want to buy. That's, historically speaking, usually a pretty good time to buy. And it's not me telling you to buy or sell or hold or do anything. That's just my personal opinion on the matter. And so I acted accordingly. After the FTX collapse, I was like, wow, that sucks. My net worth way down. Hey, look how much cheaper I can buy stuff today. So then I was happy with it. It was fine. But yeah, the idea that we're already down 80%, even if there is a potential for it to go lower, and there certainly it is, I think it may. So what? <laughs> what, are we going to go down to another 80% from here? Uh, not probable. It's a, okay. I mean, the idea of seeing unlikely things occur to the positive or negative in crypto, I mean, that's always on the table. So I try to, in a general sense, you know, never say never. But in terms of what I think is likely, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're and with again without the FTX collapse, I'd be I'd be saying like yeah, we're just gonna be moving to the upside in all likelihood. That that's what I would suspect anyway. Um, but it, it is what it is. Like, mar like markets are always going to rebound. There. This doesn't go to zero. Everybody that has ever voted the other way has just gotten crushed. Look at data from the stock market going back over a hundred years. Every time, every time it looked like the end of the world, if you continue to vote that way by, you know, getting out of the market and selling at those low levels, anybody that's ever done that has gotten eaten alive for over a hundred years. 
Same story with crypto. Every time we see one of these dramatic collapses, which we're in right now, and I lived through one in 2018 also, when Bitcoin got down to like 3200 bucks, uh, you know, and XRP was way lower too. Like, if you vote that that's with your dollars by getting out, you're like, oh, I have no confidence. It's going to keep going that direction. Anybody that has ever done that in history has ended up regretting it because markets recover. <laughs> you know, it's not going away. That's just my personal open. Well, actually, that's fact. But in terms of, uh, you know, are we going to recover here? Yes. <laughs> it's just a matter of when. Which is why I'm just going to sit here and wait. I'm going to outpatient everyone else. And I think everything's going to be fine. You let me know what you think, though, in the comment section below. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.